were having a great time. I've never seen them so happy. <laughs> and a, I think you were in here. Um, I have a whole bunch of cheerleaders on the team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And somehow they turned the new play into a cheer, and I had cheerleaders jumping <laughs> up and down. But um, And they changed the name of it, too. Yes, they did. <laughs> they changed the name of my play so they could make it work in a cheer better. Um, but, no, I've been really proud of the girls. Like, I think they're really starting um, – to see what it takes to be one of these teams in the state. We want to be a team. Um, we want to break into the, the polls. That's what we want to do. We've got Orleans and uh, Springs Valley um, that we've got coming up still that are ranked. Um, we, the Lanesville game, which I keep going back to, <laughs> um, I watched, I went and watched them. I watched three films on them, and in none of those did they shoot lights out at the three. Yeah, yeah. They the, come the Davis in, girls were, were yeah, on fire They that came night. in our gym <laughs> and hit six threes that first quarter. Um, but what I told the girls, we were down 22 to nine after that first quarter, 13 points. Mm -hmm. And we lost by 13 points. Right. So we, I was so happy with the girls. I feel like, you know, I was the number one team in the state, and they still are right now. Um, so... You know, we really want to break into that poll. We, we, you know, that's the goal. Um, we've got, I told the girls by Christmas time, you know, we're going to know. Um, right. It, you know, where, it, where are we staying? Exactly. You, you, you kind of alluded to my first question. You know, you've got your two losses on the year. One of them is to Lanesville, the number one team in 1A. Your other one is to Linton, the number 10 team in 2A, um, who, has, who has struggled a little bit as of late. But, you know, those are two powerhouse teams that have been to, you know, regional semi-state, state finals, you know, for, for those teams. And you're playing right with them. You know, your, your girls have, have bought into your system, have bought into what you're doing, and are, are playing some pretty good basketball right now. Yeah, they are. Um, you know, that's one thing we talked to the girls about. Yeah, we've lost two games. Both of them are two ranked teams and good programs. Um, we're winning the games we should win, um, and we're battling in those ones that, you know, that, that we're kind of testing where we're at. Um, so that's what, you know, I think when we, we play these other teams that are ranked, um, we're going to see where we're at. And the girls, I've got, I mean, I, in the Linton game, I actually didn't have two of my girls. Right. So um, I feel like given another day, we might give them a different game. But um, that you can't do that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, You wish you could as yes, a coach, but you, yeah, you, you don't get that opportunity. And we were there. It was on the road. and um, But, you know, the, the girls really, like I like you mentioned, they're buying in to what what I'm trying to bring here and and teach them, and um, you know they're working on their own. That you know they're, some of the things we're working on, we've really, 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 really hit fundamentals. I mean, we're you know we're hitting them every night. Um, I try to explain to them like when we are switching up an offense or a defense, why we're doing it. I want them to understand why we're doing it. Why have we changed these things, um, and make them understand. Um, so, and I, so far we're seeing results. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk about a little bit about your last game. That was the Salem game. You guys were victorious 36, 31, um, you know, kind of a, a weird, uh, I thought it was a weird game here in, in, you know, the, the gym that you're used to, your girls didn't shoot very well in the first two quarters, probably even Maybe halfway three. through the, halfway through the yeah. third, then they kind of caught fire and were able to really get going, um, what do you what do you see from that game? That game, that's almost one I don't want to remember. <laughs> but anyway, the girls were so tight before that game. You would have thought we were headed into a state championship. They were so nervous. Well, that that's the rivalry it of, is, of West it Washington is, and Salem. Which so. I have learned, like <laughs> yes, I, you know. Um, but no, I think the rivalry, ri rivalry. <laughs> um, they were so tight. Um, they were just wound up. They wanted to beat them so bad. I yeah. mean, they just um, and it actually. It just took – we had just talked about a little bit more of a pressure defense um, the night before. And I said, girls, you know, just in case we need this, I kind of want to throw this in. And I tell you what, if we wouldn't have put that in and worked on it just that little bit, um, and we started that in the third quarter, and, you know, we scratched and crawled and got back and got in the lead and finished the game out. But, um, no, we did not play well for, <laughs> probably two, like you said, two and a half quarters. Yeah. Yeah, well, you you talked about it defensively in that game. You know, Jayla Bat kind of led you on the defensive side, which is probably not something you want to hear with her being a forward, being in the paint. You know, she was able to get six deflections and three steals in that game on the defensive side of the ball. We're not talking her her putting any offense in at all, but that really is a is a kind of catalyst to your team. Kind of right. jump started them when she started getting in the passing lane. Jayla is so deceiving. 
I mean, she can, you know, she can kind of hang back and just kind of look like she's not even paying attention. And then the next thing, and I tell her, here comes those long arms and legs. Yeah. Here they come. Um, but she does, she reads the passing lanes so well. Um, you know, we're, when I'm starting, to, when I'm trying to put in some of these new offensive things, we talked yesterday, we were working on something else, and I told her, I said, you're so good at reading these passing lanes. And, um, you know, so I'm trying to put her in those positions. And then, you know, we really worked on the guards. Like guards, you're putting the pressure on. You're making them make those um, hurried passes or maybe a lobby pass or make them make a bad pass and then let, you know, Meredith or Jayla or whoever, what forwards we've got back there, Ava, our center, Layla, Macy, um, Elena. Um, you know, I tell the guards just put us – we're trying to get the guards – to not, because as you know, we have foul problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, that's another one that I'm going to talk about. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so we have some foul issues. So I'm trying to convince my guards that you're putting the pressure on. You're making them make the bad passes. Let those people in the back get the steal. And guess what? You're closer to the goal. If we're on a fast break, you're the ones down there. So right. don't think you have to make the steal. Let Work as a team and get this. You know, you, you kind of kind of alluded to it a little bit with your foul situation. Um, but I'm a I'm a big plus minus guy. Yes. So you know, looking at overall numbers, Lily Thompson in that game was plus ten. Yes. You know, she she is one who you know gets gets going, and when she's going, she's super hot. Um, and then she's like you said, she can come in and pick up two thousand twelve seconds right. and join <laughs> yeah. you right back on the yeah. bench. Um, you know, she was plus ten, and Macy Lowry was plus twelve in that yes. game. So those two girls are such athletes. I mean, probably some of the best athletes that's. Been, you know, I haven't been at West Washington my whole life, but I those two are athletes. Yeah. And, uh, no, when they come in, um, Macy has a little bit more length, um, and I play her more in the forward. And then Lily, I tell you what, this year we've played her at guard forward center. Um, she does whatever <laughs> she's, we – She's that kid. Yes. She, can, she can play yes. at any, any spot. Yeah. She gives us that she, – she, I've been bringing her off the bench, um, and she gives us a spark. Um, every time she's come in, we got in trouble in a couple other games and we needed a second half boost. And actually her and um, Macy both came in and gave us some boost on our defense. But, um, no, Lily is just – she's got skills that that girl doesn't realize she has. I mean, we have to convince her <laughs> of what she can do. Um, she has really, really – I've been so proud of her this year. She's been so coachable. Um, when we ask her to do something, she'll ask questions and – um, I've just been really proud of the player that Lily is is developing into um, from last year into this year and what we're trying to do. And, you know, even tonight we were, you know, I was trying to make sure she understand, you know, you got to stay between your girl and the basket because she's always going for a steal. Yeah. And I said, you know, sometimes if you get it, that's great. But if not, we're beat. Um, but she's just so athletic and you can just see it in her eyes when you put her in there on defense. And um, she's really given us some spark off the bench. And like I said, she's – really developing into a really special player. Let's talk about points now. You were you were led by Meredith Deaton with 17, and then um, Jay Labatt put in 11 for you. Those have been your two predominant scores throughout the year. Ava Woods is your third leading scorer. Um, you know, what do you, how do you run an offense where you've got kind of the balance that you do between those two, but then you've got a big that you can bring in and, and play some post game too? Um, you know, they have been our scores. And the amazing thing, even like Jayla, Jayla's average, there was a couple games she got in foul trouble. She only played half a game, and she's still second leading I, I was talking to <laughs> Ryan Russell just a minute ago, yeah. and I said, I've done games where I didn't even realize I called Jayla's name at all, and she ends up with 20. Yes. Uh, it, she, she is super deceptive yeah. when it comes to that. She's a quiet scorer. Um, she's, if you look, her rebounds, offensive rebounds kind of go with her scoring. Yeah. She's always getting there and getting, getting the rebounds. But I feel like, though, that we have scores at all positions. It's just so far at this time. Like Shelby um, had 16 yeah. points one game. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like we've had multiple people, um, Emma Schmidt, um, I don't know what her plus – I have, can't remember what it is. Um, but, she was – But she's she was up there. right next. She was eight. Yeah. So um, Emma Schmidt. Um, she is always in the right place, um, whether it's getting a rebound, help defense. Um, on the offense, she's one that, you know, we're going to set it back up and, and she's trying to help set. She's talking more this year. Mm -hmm. She's so quiet, such oh a yeah. quiet girl. Um, and then her sister, I mean, we have so many so many options. options. Um, her sister, Elena, another athlete, you know, and when we talked, when we played Lanesville, she spent a lot of time on 
Crozier. 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 Yeah. Um, and she actually about lost her nose on, on <laughs> yeah. playing defense yeah. on her. But, um, you know, we just have so much. Adele Brown can shoot the lights out. I cannot convince Adele Brown to shoot when <laughs> we need her to. Um, but every girl on the team um, – they have a good role. You oh, know? Yeah. We have um, our centers, Ava and um, Layla Manship. Layla comes in. Layla has such grit. Um, she comes in. To another player does exactly what we ask her to do. Um, you know, you can see her thinking all the time. Um, and the little bit of time that she's getting in there, um, she's doing exactly what we want. You, you mentioned Emma. For the season, she is a plus six with 23 minutes on the floor. A lot of times you see a plus six and, you know, it's there on the floor two or three minutes. And, right. you know, she's a she's a plus six. She's doing the things that you're asking her to do. She's being productive when she's on the floor. You know, that's a that's a huge, you know, step for a program to have your 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 point guard who you can have handle the ball and still be a, a, a plus kid. A lot of times you, you see those point guards and they drop off because right. they handle the ball so much. They get right. pressured so much. She doesn't. You know, yeah, she she has worked so – she worked over the summer and has improved so much. Um, last year during sectional time, I, I've probably told you this story, but we're getting ready to play board and, and we're having practice and we're trying to run an offense and I can't get the girls to do a step around pass. They just keep standing. <laughs> and, and I said, we're at sectional week and we're working. But the girls work so hard over the summer and you don't see Emma making those passes that she did last year. She yeah. has worked. Yep. She's listened. Um, she's, all of them She's have. trained her mind that yes. that's not – yeah, I mean, every now and then she'll, you know, but she catches herself. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll almost see her like, mm -hmm. ooh, that ain't going to work. Um, she's a smart girl. She has worked. Um, you know, she's one that when we run sprints and stuff, she's always, well, there's two or three. Like <laughs> Emma and May, or Elena and, and uh, Emma and Macy, those girls are always, you know, they're flying up and down the oh, floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it up. Tomorrow's your game with Mitchell. Mitchell has been a curse for West Washington. We are 20 and one with I, them. I can't the, believe that. The last win was when athletic director Darren Russell was coaching. I believe it was the 16, 17 season. So, um, you know, just kind of been our kryptonite over the past 20 years. Um, you know, and you've, you've got the opportunity to kind of right that ship. Mitchell is down a little bit. They are 0 and 8 on the year. Have a new head coach. Um, you know, he's he's trying to build that program, get them back to what they've been in the past. How do you approach a game like that, where you know the girls who are on the on the court tonight or tomorrow night have never beat Mitchell? Right, <laughs> right. Um, the one thing that I think may have helped us going into this Mitchell game is the girls didn't realize how hard the Salem game was going to be. So I think they'll be better mentally prepared thinking we better not overlook anyone. And then just the thought of they haven't beat Mitchell. I mean, just, I didn't know that. And I've actually, Ryan Russell, I've let mm -hmm. her have it. I said, <laughs> what were you doing for four years? You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I think with our struggle with Salem, just a little bit of struggle we had, um, and knowing that we don't want to be that first team and make them one and eight. I don't yeah. want to be that team. <laughs> um, and last year we almost had them. I think we lost, was it by five? Yeah. Um, and we were at their place last year. We, you know, we we struggled defensively against, the, I remember last year against them. They lost, they lost three really strong players. Correct. Um, but I think just having the struggle and knowing – what we could lose here if you know we don't come in here mentally prepared i think the girls had a great practice tonight we had to wake them up with just one line we couldn't get them to block out but as soon as we mentioned there was a line involved they all started blocking out again um we had a good practice tonight i i think they realized the importance it's it's a conference game you yeah. know we want to start out strong there um so i th i i mean i feel like mentally i think I think they get it. I think they understand. You know, and you, you brought up conference after Mitchell. Your next game is Perry Central. Um, always a tough, tough place to go play. You know, you, you it's a long bus ride down there. Um, you know, not the greatest shooting gym. If you're talking about shooting gyms in the state, Perry is not one of those. Right. So, you know, the start to your PLAC season, um, you know, with Mitchell and, and Perry coming up, you know, those are, those are building blocks for your team to really see, you know, are they are – they, um, ready to compete with that type of team right um yeah i, I feel like our next few weeks here because you know and then we go orleans springs <laughs> valley i mean yeah, we've got yeah um 
so we've, I mean, I, we've got to stay focused here and just do a game at a time. I did go watch Perry Central over Thanksgiving break. They're a good team. I mean, we're going to have to play good. They block out. They've um, got a new coach. Um, I liked a lot of things he was doing. I was just not happy that he was doing because we got to go play him now. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, we're going to have to be ready. It's a Monday game, which stinks. Yeah. Um, yep. Because we don't, we're not, you know, we'll have uh, Saturday to try to prepare Friday, Saturday. Um, but Perry Perry is a is a strong team. Um, they have a girl, you know, with some size on her. That um, the one thing I want to say about my girls too is the one thing when we've had players that we've had to defend. I have been, you know, we play ten players. Yeah, I, that, I was going yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I throw different people. I mean, I try to keep fresh legs unless somebody's just really got somebody shut down, doesn't need a break. But I will try to keep fresh legs on somebody that I think we need to keep busy and try to wear them down and use our depth, um, you know, to, to save our, you know, let our other girls, um, you know, maybe let the offense flow for them. Um, but we have some really good defensive players, so we try to rotate them. So you, you said it, you, you do go 10 deep, um, you know, and a lot of times you're, you're, you're 10 deep, you know, as a plan, you're not, you know, hey, this person's in foul trouble. This right. You're, you're, you know, plan substitutions to get them in. Um, how do you balance that? I mean, you've got 10 girls to get them minutes on the floor, and you've got, you know, two girls who are putting up 10-plus points a game, and you've got to get all these girls on to make everybody happy. How do you, how do you handle that as a coach? I honestly don't know if they are happy <laughs> at times, but um, it's rough. Um, it, it's good in the fact that there's the competition. Um, I didn't have that last year. Um, you know, whoever I had, who I had. And, but this year, it's, it's a, I think so far it's been a healthy competition. You know, there's people competing in e each position. Um, it is very hard. The one thing um, that I know, you know, there's been a couple games, though. Um, White River Valley was one of them. Um, and then the Salem the other night, once there was a group that kind of jailed and got us going, I left them. Yeah. And I told them, I said, if you're doing, you guys are doing what you need to do, you're going to, you know, I can't take you out if you all are doing what you're supposed to be oh, doing. Exactly. So exactly. Um, there has, and not, you know, you, you talk to the girls too and you say, girl, you know, the girls on the bench, of course, they're all still cheering. Everybody, everybody gets <laughs> along. It's all great. But I tell the girls, you know, um, and every game's been different of who's been out there. We've had a couple games we've had to come back and realize it could be your time the next time, um, but you keep keep cheering them on. Um, and it just maybe at that time who's who's gelled together or maybe the way the size is. Maybe we need bigs, more bigs. Maybe we need more smalls. Um, against Salem, I went with, um, you know, I was trying to go with those people that on that defense that we worked on the night before, the, the five that I knew I thought had it. Wow. Um, and they did. They did a great job. Um, so, yeah, it's a hard thing. Um, I do go home at night feeling bad at times because I know I was one of those players that I wanted to play. I want to play all the time. Um, but sometimes if, you know, a true team here. And I told the girls, I want to start playing defense to where you're wanting to come out because you've worked <laughs> so hard. So we're honestly, we're going to really try to pick up our defense um, and really cause some teams trouble. So hopefully in the next couple games we can get that going. Um, you know, I'm going to brag on you a little bit. I saw, I was here for the end of your practice and saw the beginning of the junior high girls practice. And you, you said multiple times while you were talking to the junior high girls that you wanted to build a program, you know, that people were, were, you know, like the, like the BNLs, like the, the Lanesvilles, you know, you want to build that program and you're out here with the junior high girls, showing them the offense, running through it, you know, different ways, different sets. And it's the same kind of offense that you run. So it's, right. it's top down and you've, you've really kind of instilled that, you know, whole, whole program um, mentality to everyone on the on the lady side of, of basketball here at West Washington. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and it's, you know, um, last year I was just trying to make sure I had every, all my stuff covered. But, no, over the summer and this year I have really, you know, I do. I want to build a program. These girls that are out here practicing right now in 7th and 8th grade, um, they're our future. Um, and I, I want them ready. And they are working on, you know, those coaches have spent time, the junior high coaches have spent, they have spent hours <laughs> at our practices they were there over the summer um they have put hours and hours of time in so that we can all gel together um and get i want these girls i told these girls i've had my time you know i was a player i got to do it i've yeah. had the stuff that i've gotten i want them to get their picture up on this west washington wall and i want this program to be something special i feel like we're getting there um 
you know, I don't want to be too confident, but I feel like, um, you know, we're getting there. The girls are working hard. We have such good girls. You know, that's one thing. I never even have to check grades anymore. They're all smart <laughs> girls. They're good girls. You know, I have to worry about them getting in trouble. Um, I'm not on wood. I hope it. But they, you know, I, I'm really, I've said this a million times. I am so blessed. Um, I said I wouldn't go to a program and coach unless it was the right fit, and this has been the right fit, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, kind of not to look ahead, not to look past this season, but you've got some y – y you're not very senior heavy. You've got, you know, Shelby Griffiths and, and Eva, um, both who are who are seniors who you're going to lose next year. But then you've got a group of, you know, six to eight um, eighth graders that are going to be coming up. So you've right. got, you know, a good core group you know, right. to, to help build that girls' basketball, um, you know, to get some pictures on the wall here yeah. in, in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. Um, you know, and, and it, it comes from the leadership that you've instilled in the in the high school program, and it's the trickle-down effect. So, you know, it, it comes down to the junior high, down to the elementary, um, you know, and, and the, the girls see you at the stuff. You know, you're at the junior high games. You're at the you're, – you're, you're very visible around. And that's something that, you know, not, not a whole lot of coaches do, not a whole lot of coaches – um, you know, see the see the value in that, but the the kids when they see you, they're like, oh, that's the varsity coach. We want we want to do, yeah. you know, we want to make it right. Well, I I feel like that's what I need to do. I mean, that's and I want these girls to do. I want them to know that I care. Um, you know, um, you know, I get to know like girl down there just shot a color football. She plays quarterback <laughs> on the football team. You know, I want to get to know them and I want them to know me. We took um, so the other thing this summer. Um, I actually I decided that myself and my high school staff would coach the junior high and we um, play the conference teams mm -hmm. as many as we could get scheduled. So we coached them, helped us to get to know them. It helped them to get to know us. Um, so we took the time this summer and we did workouts with them. Um, so in the summer, we really, really tried to work with the junior high girls and get to know them. Um, but I think that's important. I mean, if you know, so when these girls come in as freshmen, they sh they know they should just flow right in. Um, the freshmen that we had this year coming in, um, I felt like they just, you know, they just came right in, and you know, they're they're everything's nice and smooth. They knew what we wanted. We'd had the offenses worked on this summer, um, but no, I it, I do. I feel it's very important that that I'm here and they know I care. My you know, even my coaching staff and <laughs> actually that, that, that's where I'm going <laughs> next. Tell, talk to me a little bit about your coaching staff. You know, you've got a kind of a who's who of, of basketball <laughs> as, yeah. a, as a coaching staff. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, it's just been an amazing coaching staff. So um, my JV, who's from uh, same coach as last year, Mike Lewis, he's actually my preacher. Um, we call him preacher Mike. Um, he's our older kind of steady going guy. <laughs> you know, he's, um, he's coached, years um different levels and then um i have of course ryan russell that's from here and she's you know she knows all the ins and out of west washington <laughs> and she can shoot the lights out she's still to this day she'll come out here when we're short maybe we've got an odd number we need an extra mm -hmm. person she'll she'll come out in her socks and she can still light them up from I mean, two or three steps past the three-point line. Oh you know? yeah, I saw her. I saw her today shooting, and she's got nails on. She's got her nails done, yeah. and still, you know, oh, letting yeah. them fly she's, and knocking yeah, them down. She's so. something else. And then my daughter Mackenzie, who, um, you know, successful at BNL and went to Sim State and and uh, got beat by a good Warren Central team. I still <laughs> wish they could have that game back. But um, you know, she's she's she was the she's the the guard mentality like you've got to get down on defense you know she's she's got that um and then this year we have um amy pride who i've known for years her daughter last year played for bnl and they won the state um and she's helped coach as mallory came through her daughter and so she's on the same wave as everything we are here so um everybody you know we're all on the same page here um you know we I don't want to say that we're trying to bring, you know, the things, you know, from the Bedford stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I was raised by Pete Pritchett and some of the <laughs> stuff. You know, I didn't eat a dinner without going over an offense yeah. or a defense. And I've, I just lived it. And, um, I'll, you know, I might tear up here, but I want to do this for him, too. He's no longer with us. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, talk, talk to me a little bit about the offense that you don't give away any secrets right. or anything. But that's a that's an offense that's really close to your heart. You know, it's yeah. it's something that's that's special. Um, and it works, and there's so many variations that can come right. off of it, able to get 
get kids that can score, you know, able to get the girls that can score the ball in lots of different places. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I want continuity. It's got to keep running, um, which sometimes my girls struggle with. <laughs> um, but you got, I really believe that you got to have an offense that has continuity. Um, it's, you know, you got to have, you know, things where you can get layups. You want some screens. You've got to have, you know, a lot of continuity, a lot of things like, I mean, we there's so many options we can do off that. And over the – I have forgotten. We've had so many special <laughs> plays off that. And I know my dad and I, we would sit and, and we'd write them all out. And, you know, and then the next year we got – and I mean, there's so many special plays off that yeah. that it's just, just unreal. Um, but I know it works. Um, it You know, I was talking to the girls um, down here, the junior high girls, and it's got – I mean, I know – it was different players in different school, but it has five state championships. Oh, yeah. And it has one boys' state championship. And, um, you know, it's not outdated because it was the team that did it last year in 4A that, that was using it. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have to run it right. We have to, you know, get the timing and stuff down. But I know it works. So, um, and we we don't just have one offense. We have, you know, Multiples. you've got to mix yeah. it up oh, yeah. because you don't want teams to – to you know know exactly what you're doing all the time so we're always throwing in different different things but um yeah that one that one's dear to my heart <laughs> <laughs> well coach that's all i've got for you tonight thank you very much for your time okay. um you know good luck tomorrow with your your mitchell game hopefully we can make that um you know a, a two win let's let's, two, let's two get win. a streak going yeah, the right get a streak direction going, here so yes that'll okay. be that'll be great but thank you very much for your time final thoughts just you know Thanks for all the support we have, um, you know, parents, fans, students. Uh, let's get a big crowd and if get those students here and get them loud and rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one. I know Ryan uh, Shipman is definitely going to be here. He's <laughs> always here, and he's loud enough for about ten of them. That's so. true. Yeah, and he gets a, he can get them riled up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he can even get the other coach riled up. Oh, at times. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So thank you very much for your time, all and right. we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, thank you. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Batt at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. 
unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. We're back live on Senator Sports Talk with the boys coach. Um, we just had uh, Coach Miss Moore. Now we've got Coach Cummings in. Um, Jamie, you're the you're the only undefeated coach in West Washington boys history at the moment. Um, you know, a, a great way to start off your season. You you have a home game with Salem where you're able to come out and be victorious. Um, you know, you're led with with your your senior leadership. You've got four seniors on your team. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you felt that game kind of went. Well, we got off to a slow start. <laughs> uh, I will agree with that 100%. There's no other way to say it, but uh, it wasn't what we hoped we would do. Um, I think there was some nervous energy. Everything we're doing is brand new. Every Everything, the kids are they're working really hard trying to do what I'm asking. As a coaching staff, we're asking a lot of them. And uh, they're learning and they're growing. And, and I think you saw that during the game. Some of that was nervous energy. We, we did some good things early. It just didn't show on the scoreboard. You know, if we make a shot here or there, it, it looks a whole lot different. But uh, they're trying to do what we're asking them, and they're doing a good job of it. And I just, I just hope we can stay in tune with the process. We, we're talking about let's stay with the process. Let's flow and just believe in what we're trying to do here and not panic. And, and I think we saw signs of panic early, like, oh, i got to do something now. i got to do it. i got to make this special play. And we don't. We, we just got to trust our buddies and do our part. We got good senior leadership. And that I'm going to lean on those guys <laughs> a lot. Um, and I've told them, you're, you're going to take a beating some nights. Yeah. Um, you don't deserve it because other people deserve they messed up but i'm going to get after you guys to challenge them right um let's let's jump to the other side first you know you've got four seniors you started four seniors with one freshman um holden russell came into the game um you know offensively didn't really show a whole lot on the offensive side um but defensively was able to get in the passing lane got five deflections two steals kind of did did a lot of your ball handling once kitten was was kind of taken away a little bit there in the second quarter um you know, you've got all these seniors, but then you've got this freshman that kind of comes in too. Um, I think he did great. Uh, it's going to be – he's not going to score, you know, maybe 20 or 25 a game where some other guys may bust loose for some big games. Not to say that, that he can't, but he's going to set the table for guys more than he's going to score right now, especially as a freshman. He's going to grow as a player, and, and you'll see him scoring more throughout his career, I think. But uh, he's a great passer. He sees the floor and – and defensively, you, you hit it. Um, I had him for seven deflections, but you're saying five plus the two steals, yeah. and I gave him credit well, for the two steals. There you go. Uh, we'll count it as seven. So that's seven, <laughs> and that is a great, great number. Um, add that to the fact that he is our primary handle. Um, if we take, you know, Kenton off the ball or Kenton out of the game, Holden, as a freshman, he, you know, he just turned 15. He's 14 years old during that game. Yeah. Uh, we turned 15 last weekend, and that that's – that's a lot. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Um, he's just going to get physically better, bigger, faster, stronger, and and his mind is it's unlimited what he can learn. So let, let's now jump back to the other side. You know, we talked about holding a little bit the freshman side. Kenton Chase, your your senior uh, point guard, off guard, depending on where, where you want to play him at, um, you know, comes in and the first – first couple of quarters really don't see a whole lot from him but then the third and fourth really the fourth quarter he kind of takes over and you know is driving to the bucket is getting to the free throw line you know talk to me a little bit about the the growth of Kenton that you've seen over the summer and what what has changed in him well he's a great kid first and foremost um he, he's he's trying to please me um maybe a little too hard sometimes <laughs> but I want him to have the freedom to go make a play um him and Ian both can get by with a little more than some of the other guys on their shot selection because they're so creative and and whatnot. But there's times where you got to, again, trust the process. And there was a point where we weren't, and Kenton pushed the button a little too quick, and I told him about it. And, man, he responded. And he went out and basically took over that game for us, finishing at the bucket, getting to the line, making his shots. Um, he was on the front of the press wreaking havoc. Um, he He's just a great kid and a, and a leader. And the guys are going to follow him. 
um, that's good and bad. <laughs> if he's struggling, <laughs> we're, we're, we don't know who else to look to. Yeah. You know, um, a little bit with Ian the same way. And, and both of those guys struggled a little bit early as to what we had seen last summer and what we've seen each day in practice. They, they lead us in scoring. So, obviously, someone's on the other side, and they know that too. So, they're going to try and take them out or whatever. So how are we going to deal with adversity? And and I think you saw how Kenton Chase is going to deal with some of that adversity. Yeah. He, he's he's able to, you know, change change mode there. Well, and it's like he's got another gear. Once he gets once he gets going, you know, somebody may be with him, but then he's got another gear and he's able to get by them and around them. Yeah. And then he was able to finish. He's strong. Um, he's got to make good decisions, and we're, we're I'm trying to open his eyes so he sees the floor a little differently. Uh, last night, you know, pointed out, you know, you went right, you should have went left. There's less over there. Um, just little things that I'm sure other coaches have talked to him about. I just want him to see and experience everything that he can in senior year um, because he, he could be something really special. He is something special, but he can be, you know, he can be whatever he wants to be on the floor. You know, you, you talked about Ian Rosenbaum, um, you know, the 6'5 senior Kind of a when you hear six five at a one a school, you're thinking center. Um, Ian really doesn't kind of fit that. He's more of a, a forward, a shooter type, um, you know. And that's just the evolution of the game, what it's what it's become. Um, how do you how do you fit a guy like that into your into your offense? Who you know, predominantly in one a, when you see a six five kid, he's going to be in the paint, you know, with his back to the bucket. Well, we want to get in the ball in in situations and and everybody, not just Ian, in the most favorable situation. Some nights it will be, you know, on the block. Other nights it's going to be 20 feet from the rim. And tonight at practice, you know, he looked really good shooting the ball. Um, we're going to see some size as we – different opponents. And, you know, it's not easy to shoot over 6'9", even if you're 6'5". <laughs> yeah. So can 6'9", guard 6'5", out on the floor. So we, you know, we like to see – how they match he's up. a kid who can stretch the floor for you. Absolutely. I mean, we we want to use him in different spots. We can pull their big out if it's the matchup. Um, we can post up a small. He's he's just really unique. He's not the fastest kid, but again, he's a smart kid who understands some of his strengths, some of his weaknesses, and as we can point them out and grow from the staff to you know to in within himself. There's another guy. He he can put up 20, 25 yeah. a game. Um, and some nights he's not going to, but we're looking for him to score the basketball inside and out. We have sets for him inside and out, and depending on who we're playing, whether it's man, whether it's his own, you know, it's up to us as a staff to figure out where where he best fits. But we got to put all all our guys in situations to win, and that's on us. Let's talk a little bit about your your third. Um, I don't know if you would call him your third option of scoring, Jackson Cameron. Um, you know, Jackson is one of those guys who does kind of, I don't know, the, the stuff that doesn't show up in the book. He's the hes the guy who's in the passing lane. He's the guy who's the first to the ball when it's on the floor. Um, you know, but when you need him to, if you're looking for somebody to be a spot-up three-point shooter, Jackson is, is the go-to there. He has no problem shooting the ball, <laughs> and he can get hot. Um, he's done it um, in practice. He's done it some in the summer, and he had a stretch. He hit a couple big threes the other night, kind of bust loose. Um, we've talked about it uh, each each of our guys kind of seemed to have their own little roll or little run there. Um, and it was all, you know, from the last three minutes of that third quarter on, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, when it happened and guys getting that rhythm, you got to ride it as long as you can. I'd like to see us get Jackson a couple more looks. Um, but I was happy with everybody, you know, the way it played out. It couldn't have been better. It was a great run, and, and different people contributed to that, whether it was just a deflection. I mean, Holden had a couple steals, turnovers that he forced – quick and then other guys were scoring quick in uh, in runs and and that's you know that's how you get momentum and man if I could sell that stuff I'd be rich <laughs> yeah yeah so Titan Williams is your other starter um, that we haven't mentioned yet kind of the, the if if you were going to call a, a center on your team he kind of fills that role not not as tall as Ian um, you know maybe just an inch shorter um, maybe not the the wide body that Ian has but does a heck of a job down there in the post for you getting the rebounds and is able to play with his back to the bucket a little bit too yeah we're, we're working on that we're trying to develop it. I think he's a better scorer than he gives himself credit um, for being a scorer I think he can do some things he made a couple of nice moves in the first half I remember because um, it was down on this end uh, he got right right there and he just didn't quite get the ball in the bucket if those go in and that's huge for a guys confidence yeah. and and then you know we see that we're scoring there we're going to go back to that um, 
he he knows that Kenton might be you know number one or two, and Inton in is the other one or two, and it don't have to be that way. Yeah, I, I want him to think maybe I'm that guy, and once I get it down there, can I make a move right and left? And he's you know going both directions, and he can. Um, he has really good practices here and there and good moments. I want you know 32 minutes yeah. of that good moments, and then we're going to be really good. Let, let's talk about your next one that comes off the bench. Um, Colton Brown, it, it, he, he's another one of the, those freshmen that comes in, and, I mean, once he walks into the gym, the, the the bucket's in range. I mean, he can shoot from anywhere. You know, it's the same as his dad. His dad was a, a pure shooter. Uh, you know, how do you how do you get a kid like Colton – into the game more so that he can he can you know get some of those shots where you know I know you're senior heavy I know you've got a, a go to how do you how do you get a guy like that into your offense well into the offense is not the hard <laughs> thing for Colton I can get him into my offense um, and Colton and I had this conversation so anybody listening it's it's just something else uh, for them I guess Colton needs to play defense and, and he's done a super, super job of that. I talked to him about, you know, if you want more minutes, you've got to guard harder. You've got to work harder on this side of the ball. And the very next day, he's doing it, and he's trying. He, you know, I said, it's okay. If you're going to play a couple JV and some, you know, three varsity whatever quarters, however we set this up, you got five fouls both games. So be aggressive. Learn to play defense and then back off. Try not to foul. But he can be very aggressive. He's athletic. He's strong. He stretches the floor offensively. We can do a lot of things down there. As he becomes a better defensive player, he's going to see more and more time on the varsity. Um, you know, something that has always kind of been the Achilles heel of, of West Washington boys basketball is free throw shooting. We've, we've always just kind of struggled. We've been a, a, a 50, 60 percent, you know, free throw shooting team throughout, throughout the year. You were able to come out in the Salem game and knock down 14 of 15. Um, you know, is that something that you're you're you know doing at practice more? Is that just something that just happens? Is it, how how are you how are you getting them to to knock down these free throws? So I'd be lying if I said I taught them how to shoot free throws. <laughs> um, we, we work on some free throw shooting, but we're not overemphasizing it. Um, it was a great night for us from the line. Obviously, 14 out of 15. You don't expect that. that that's you're going to win a lot of close games if you can even come close to that. I just think they stepped up with confidence and made shots, and they're all capable of doing it, and they could do it again. It's it's not anything special or unique we do in practice um, to get you know more practice or anything of that nature. But uh, you know, some of the other coaches may say they're the free throw coach. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I definitely. I, I know one of your assistants loves free throws. Tom Tom Rosenbaum is a free throw guy. He he, from his his girls' days to his junior high time with the with the seniors. Um, you know, he's always always been a free throw guy. Well, they're definitely important, and you can win or lose a game there. Um, and I sure hope that you didn't just jinx us with that <laughs> with that question or lead in. So. Well, but uh, we'll see how we do, and uh, I hope that we can come close to that. You know, on the season, that'd be something remarkable. Um, your upcoming game, you know, this Friday, you do travel to Eastern. Eastern, you know, has Ray Weatherford as their coach. You know, sixteen and nine. Um, you know, last year, great. You know, great run with his kids. Ran into a buzzsaw at sectional with the Brownstown uh, Braves. Um, he he comes in first game this year, is unable to get past Casey Nash, who uh, the, on the on the nice side he lights them up for 51, um, scores the first 26 of that game. Then he travels to Scottsburg, who is just a, a powerhouse, um, you know, and gets beat um, 70 to 26 there. They go on a 26 to one run in the first quarter against him. Um, you know that that Eastern team is looking for some some revenge. They're looking looking you know to to go forward. West Washington doesn't want to be that you know that team. They want to go out and you know continue that streak of what's what's hurt Eastern. How do you how do you go into a game like that where a team's been been down, been you know beaten the past two games? Well, they they've they've had a rough road. I mean. I, I don't disagree. Nobody wants to open with Borden and then go to Scottsburg. <laughs> no, on the road. Yeah. Um, tough, tough start to the season. So, you know, we're not taking them lightly. We're not taking them like a team that's been beaten that bad. Um, we we lost to them last year. Yeah. Um, it's not the same team. And, yeah, we look a little different, but what have you. Still got to play. It's our first game on the road. How are we going to play? I'm more concerned about our guys than their guys as far as what they do. 
we, we got a pretty good feel what we've seen. Again, we don't have the length that Scottsburg has, so we can't play the defense that they did and get the 26 to one yeah. run. I don't know if we got a guy that can put up 51 <laughs> like Borden. Um, but we're going to try and learn from those games. We've watched them both. We've uh, got a good scout already, got a good idea how we're going to defend them and what we want to do. We've been working on it all week with our guys, breaking down some drills and, and really hammering home how we're going to guard some ball screen action. They do a lot of that. And uh, we just need to talk and communicate regardless of what they run. And, yeah, we don't want to be, you know, their first victory by no means. And I think, uh, you know, they, they got a little bit of doubt where they're at right now. So that's that's in our favor. I think if we could get off to a good start, it would be a really good thing. It always is on the road regardless of the situation. But especially now, they, they're, they're questioning some things, trying to figure out who they are. And if, if we could get off to a good start, I think it would be – very beneficial to us. One thing that's going to be a struggle for West Washington going to Eastern, they do start a 6-9, um, you know, s true center build. How do you, without giving giving away your game plan, how do you how do you go about defending a 6-9? Well, you know, I, I think the best way to guard 6-9 is to pressure the guard. If he can't see the 6-9, then okay. If we can beat them up and down the court, I think that's an advantage. He, he's a big kid, and if he gets the ball two, three feet from the basket, we're, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, it's pretty obvious that uh, he can he can make a layup. Yeah. So we got to keep him out of there, keep the ball out of his hands as much as we can at that at that spot on the floor. Uh, we got to be physical, but he's a big kid. So, you know, I don't want to give away too much yeah. here. Oh, but, yeah, for sure. But I do feel like uh, we want to run the floor. We want to make him run the floor. I think that'll be advantageous. And uh, we got to do a good job of pushing him off the block as much as we can. So that leads into the the question, you know, your your depth. You've got some some guys injured, some guys hurt. Um, you know, that that can't play. Your numbers are a little low at the moment until those guys are able to come back and be on the floor. You know, foul trouble with a with a big guy like that. You know, you've got two bigs of your own. But then where do you go when when they you know get in foul trouble? What happens? Well. The way we are right now with our JV quarters and playing <laughs> both games, we're, we're very thin. Um, we're, we're looking maybe to get Jackson Wiseman some time. Um, and he's not a post, but he's going to have to help at that spot if, if need be. Um, you know, Colton Brown, we mentioned him earlier. He's not a post player either, but he may be wrestling that big guy tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but Friday night. Um, we don't know what that looks like. and. We were very fortunate the first game. We didn't get in foul trouble. No one got injured, rolled an ankle, and we were uh, able to play, you know, six or seven. Slid Carson in there for a little while, and uh, we we came out victorious. We hope we can do it again. I'd like to go deeper in the bench. There's there's no way I can play eight or nine guys with the quarters the way they right. were playing a JV game. Yeah. It's not mathematically possible. Um, so hopefully we get some guys back, and I, I don't have to worry about that so much, and we can – sub a little more freely that's that's something that's that's you know always difficult at the 1a level having enough guys making sure that they're healthy and they're able to play and you know you've you've started off the season probably in the in the the worst possible spot with kids coming in injured um you know you've got Brady Rosenbaum who came in and uh, in the first couple of days of practice you know broke his foot and then you've got Isaiah Dennis who's out who both would would help you in your JV time you've got Ryan Shipman who's walking around in a boot um, you know those guys would would definitely help you quarter wise giving you some more some more rotation some more guys some more bodies to be able to play um, you know do you have any kind of timetable on when you might be getting some of those guys back are you going to get some of those guys back is that a well I hope so. I keep hearing <laughs> different things. Um, depends on who I talk to, but I'm hearing a couple of them could be back before Christmas, just barely, and a couple of them in January, which would be great. I, any one of them. We've also got Will Cummings, who's on the sideline, um, that you know may or may not get a play this season. Isaiah told me he, the doctors just told him he may be back before season's over. Um, I don't think that one is as likely as Brady getting released or, or Ryan. But uh, I'd take any of them right now. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll figure out if we need a bigger or small. Yeah. I don't care how big you are. But Plug them in somewhere. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make you a big or a small just right. because. 
Um, you know, looking looking just at your stats overall, shooting from the floor was a was a struggle in that Salem game, and it's it's the first game of the season. It's getting some of those um, you know nerves out. It's a Salem game. It's in your home gym. It's a senior led team. They want to win. Um, you know, I know that I know that you you'd like to be, you know, in the 50% range. You'd like to be higher than that, of course. But if you're knocking down half of the shots that you're taking, you're in good shape. Um, you know, so shot selection for the boys, I didn't see them take bad shots. Um, sometimes down the floor, maybe it was a little rushed. Maybe they let one go probably before you wanted them to, to do that. Have you had the talk with them? Hey, you know, maybe an extra pass here or there or? I, I've not uh – uh We've talked about what a good shot is. To me, what a good shot is a shot you make 50% of the time. That's obviously different for each person. Yeah. You might make your three-point shot 50% of the time, so shoot it. I may not, so don't shoot it. Shoot one that you can make half the time, and then hopefully you do shoot 50%. We've talked about that. I want the kids to be really confident right now. I don't want to deteriorate anybody's head. I just know confidence is a big thing. I, I want them to think they're shooters, and then I'm going to – see and have some more data a little yeah. more to go off of um, game situations how we're performing and then we're going to you know I, I think christmas is a good time to say you know this is probably not your best suit maybe you ought to go here or do this instead of maybe you ought to pass it maybe we shouldn't shoot off two passes maybe we need to make six or seven um, i do talk about ball reversal i do talk about attacking in transition if it goes in and comes back out i don't care if it's one or two passes i think if I'm square catching the ball, um, and that's your inside out, on a missed shot when it comes back out to that shooter, he's usually pretty square, and you don't have to worry about pivoting and turning to the bucket. So you're not going to get a better look, but that still doesn't mean you should shoot it. Right. So, so we're trying to figure that out, but I, I'm giving him a little more freedom right now than, than I probably will second half season. <laughs> so I got two, two final questions for you. Talk to me a little bit about your coaching staff. You've got some guys that – you know, were, were coaches in the past. You've got some guys who you brought with you. Talk to me a little bit about them. Well, uh, so so Josh Haltom, I brought him with me. I've coached with him in the past um, at other schools and uh, just a great basketball mind. He's a, he's an associate minister in Bedford um, at, at Mount Pleasant Church. He's a great guy. Um, I trust him in so many ways. I think he's a great communicator both on and off the court. I think the kids love him. He uh, moves so much during the game. So from up, up where we are right now, I've got a, a great angle at, at your bench. And he is a mover. He is looking behind the scorer's table at the, other, at the opposing team, you know, seeing who's, who's in the game. He's out in the middle of the floor looking. He, he is a mover and a, and a shaker. So he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's busy. Um, he's looking for matchups is what he's looking over the table for. If they sub in, you know, who, who, how are we going to match up? Right. That's one of the things he's focused on during the game. But uh, – He's played and coached a lot. I got a lot of respect for him. I think we work well together, looking for big things there. Um, Coach Rosenbaum was here last year. For how many years? I don't <laughs> even know. Um, great guy to have on staff. He's he's really focused on the defensive end. And he sees stuff offensively, but I think he's more geared, a little more like myself, to the defensive side of the ball. And I think he's uh, adapting to me and my, my communication, my – whatever you want to call it, terminology, and doing a great job there communicating to the kids what, what we want to do. It's a little bit different than what's been in the past and what he's used to, but he's, he's absorbing it and moving on and passing it on to the kids. And then you got Coach Matthews, who's, who's been here before, coaching the JV guys, working with the younger guys, you know, just trying to really win games, but that's not the most important yeah. thing. And, and it's hard, and I told him that, and I know no, I don't want to hear Yeah, it. nobody wants your, to hear that. Your job isn't to win. Your job is to develop kids, mm -hmm. and that's one thing I do love that we get to do is, is coaching these guys is develop them as, as young men, both on and off the court, which is just it's a great thing. Um, but, you know, he's trying to push that JV guy up to the varsity level. Right. And then – guess what he's got to do it again yeah. because he it's, just it's lost never his ending. guy <laughs> yep. so that's a tough spot and he's really really handicapped right now <laughs> you know he finishes the game with four guys on the court he only had five for the entire second half plus both overtime right. so uh you know comes out with a win so great job coach yeah yeah final final question for you a game in in indiana that you want to see that you're not you're not in so not west washington what matchup do you want to see what matchup do you want to go sit in the gym and watch, watch, you know, them play? 
I want to watch Orleans and Brownstown. It's a good one. It's always a good one. Yeah. I watched I watched Brownstown last night um, versus Salem, and they they have a lot of matchup prob they they present a lot of matchup problems. Very talented. Uh, both both of those schools got a lot of good ball yeah. players, and they'll have to play the game. Great coaches. Um, I just I think that'll be a good matchup. Yeah. Late yeah. In, later in the season. Yep. Is that at Brownstown? I or believe it's at Orleans. Oh, I was going to say, if it's at Brownstown, you're not getting <laughs> – tickets are tickets are tough to come by I, for that one. I feel like I, I was at the game last year, and I, I'm not, it was at Brownstown. It's going to be at Orleans well, this year. Maybe be able to, to sneak in and get a ticket for that one. So I hope so. Well, thank you very much, Coach, for your time. Um, you know, good luck on your on your trip to Pekin Friday with your matchup with the Musketeers. Hopefully you can you can come out with a with a victory, and we will talk to you next week about – your Eastern game. Sounds great. Kay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers, unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. Lynx Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812 812- 883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save.